have all of these bats that might be holding coronaviruses. We have animals that span from the late 1800s to 2020. Each specimen has its own unique story. These long dead bat specimens offer a rich source of information about when, how, and where bat coronaviruses evolved. These historical patterns could one day help scientists build models that predict future outbreaks. <laughs> hey, Missy. Hey, good, morning. good morning. It's good to see you. Yeah, it's been Not a long time. Good. I'd give you a hug normally, but <laughs> Not I guess today. we'll stay far apart. Yeah. <laughs> This project's really exciting because, for one, it brings together a lot of researchers that have expertise in different areas. This experiment needs Missy's knowledge of the past and Carly's ability to wield state-of-the-art genetic detection tools. Okay, Carly, welcome to the Bat Collections. This is incredible. With over 138,000 bats, this collection may well hold the secrets of coronavirus evolution. <laughs> Missy just has to figure out where to start looking. Oh we had God. a lot of samples that came back from Myanmar, which shares quite a long border with China, so we figured that they might be a great place to start. If a bat contains any viruses related to killers like SARS-CoV-2, then wherever it was collected may be a high risk for spillover. Did you find one? Oh, I think I did. The rhinolophus from Myanmar. Perfect. Okay, set it on the tray. While this method might be easier and safer than catching bats in the wild, it's much harder to find the viruses. If we think about all of the hundred years sitting in a jar and degradation, it's more likely that we'll need to sample up to a hundred samples for us to get one positive. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is get the bats out. Okay, going in. Oh, they look kind of scary. <laughs> he does look a little fearsome, I guess. Let the yeah. alcohol drip off. 